After the release of the first Dev Diary and a few snippets of gameplay shared by various content creators, such as Jaw Raptor, we've now seen a decent amount of Assassin's Creed Shadows gameplay. And as a huge fan of the Tenchu games back in the day, I am really excited. The new stealth mechanics, such as being able to breathe through a bamboo tube, clinging to the ceiling with your grappling hook, and assassinating enemies through shoji doors are all staples from from software's dormant ninja franchise and there's even a reference to tenchu uh, one of tenchu's co-protagonists within the gameplay reveal so the child that asks for yasuke's help in the beginning is called rikimaru and rikimaru is of course the male protagonist from the original tenchu games so that definitely tells me that the developers of shadows really do seem to be fans themselves and it fills me with a lot of confidence that this will be a really good shinobi experience i'm also very happy to see returning features from older entries of assassin's creed as well such as taking cover behind obstacles the classic eagle vision seeing as we don't have a bad companion now though i will come back to that later and all that said i want to talk a little bit about what i'm hoping to see in the full game so it's a combination of realistic expectations and a wish list as a fan of the Assassin's Creed game since the first one came out in 2007, which really makes me feel old. I'll also be giving my thoughts on some of the information that we've learned from various content creators that got to see behind the scenes closed doors footage and various developer interviews that have come out since the gameplay reveal. So just before we dive in, please drop a like to support this video if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. So first, let's quickly review what we already know, what looks good and some of the concerns that I have. The open world looks really vibrant and richly detailed and I do love that this game is set on the mainland of Japan in a later time period to Ghost of Tsushima as well because we see more densely populated areas such as like towns and cities and more castles and as much as I love the focus on like natural beauty in Ghost of Tsushima it's nice to have a contrasting experience and a greater focus on these urban areas will hopefully differentiate them as well and also obviously provide better opportunities for parkour which is a staple of the franchise. I like that we can now carry multiple weapons on our character at once that are actually visible, such as the katana on Yasuke's belt while he has a kanabo on his back. It's a fairly small detail, but I like being able to see both weapons. It feels more authentic and realistic rather than just magically switching weapons and pulling it out of thin air. That's kind of the way they did it in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this system where the weapons are visible reminds me of the older Assassin's Creed games where you could see Altair's sword and knife on his character model, and it just made it feel a bit more grounded. There's something just satisfying to me about actually being able to see your weapons and equipment on the character. And part of that as well is the details on Naoi's outfit, such as being able to see a grappling hook and smoke bombs and things like that on her belt. It's a really nice touch. Combat looks like it feels a lot weightier and less floaty than it did in Odyssey and I'm comparing it to Odyssey because obviously that is the previous game that this team worked on. And this is a welcome change because in Odyssey it did sometimes feel like Cassandra was kind of disconnected from the environment, almost like she was skating, like it was very arcadey in a way, I don't know how else to describe it. It just had this kind of weightless feel to it. Whereas in Shadows, especially with Yasuke, it really feels like the attacks are connecting and it seems a lot more grounded. I think what sells this even more is that the environment is much more interactive now, where you can break various items and structures around you as well. And it's also being confirmed that Yasuke can chamber his attacks, which is a brand new mechanic for the franchise. So that means you can sort of pose at the end of one attack to set up another one. I personally did enjoy how the ability loadouts worked in Odyssey. So I'm happy to see that something very similar is returning here. Hopefully there's a huge amount of skills and abilities to play around with as well, like in Valhalla. That was one thing, even though the skill tree itself was quite messy, I enjoyed the fact that there was so many different skills that you could use to kind of create your own build. I am a little bit concerned over how some of the skills actually look. Like this one for Naoi, it's very silly looking and a bit goofy, especially when For Honor, which is obviously also a Ubisoft game, has an Orochi finisher, which 
does something very similar but looks significantly better. It's just odd that they didn't go for something more like that. The new stealth mechanics look incredible and really harken back to older games like Splinter Cell and, as I mentioned earlier, Tenchu. I can't wait to see what we can do to manipulate and leverage our environment for stealth. I did have some concerns that parkour might be leaning more towards Valhalla and less towards Mirage, which took many steps in the right direction on release and then after launch as well, with some post-launch updates to how the flow and backer jacks worked. While Naue does seem to be able to climb vertically very fast and has the extremely cool grappling hook to navigate unreachable areas, some of the animations are a little bit clunky and do seem more reminiscent of Eivor in Valhalla rather than Basim. We've yet to see if we can do things like height gaining ejects or side ejects, though we do get to see a back eject of sorts here, so I do hope they bring those improvements across from Mirage. If they haven't, they still have quite a few weeks at the time of this video till release, so hopefully it's something that they'll notice feedback on. I don't mind if the parkour is more or less only as good as it was in Mirage, but I'll be disappointed if it regresses again, so fingers crossed. I do have to praise how acrobatic Naoi is though. She reminds me a lot of Marcus Holloway from Watch Dogs 2 in the way that she flips over obstacles. It's really cool. It does also seem like we might be getting controlled descent back from Unity, which is great. It's hilarious that Yasuke actually really struggles with parkour, and I like that they've done this to set the characters apart. It feels like Naoi represents the older games, and then Yasuke represents the newer games, and players will have a choice in which one they prefer. I really hope they lean into the tools and skills of the Shinobi as well. There's plenty of ways that they could bring back features from previous games in interesting ways. So, for example, we know that social stealth is being toned down apparently in this entry, but honestly, I think there's been some slight miscommunication there because it's not really required. Obviously, Yasuke can't blend in because he's a foreigner during a time period where that was relatively rare. And he's also a samurai, so he prefers to fight head on anyway. Naoi, on the other hand, goes unnoticed by default. That's how it's been described. So in the open world, essentially being automatically blended in unless she does something specifically to attract attention. So if she goes into an area that she's not supposed to be in, for example, where you would always rely on classic stealth anyway, so I don't see that being an issue. As far as I'm concerned, it sounds to me as though she just automatically has social stealth. I've seen some comments of people saying that they're upset with the removal of social stealth, which I understand, but honestly, I've always found it to be, and this might be a hot take, but I've always found it to be a little bit clunky and a bit of a gimmick. Don't get me wrong, it's cool in concept and it was satisfying when you'd like blend in with the monks as Altair, but I've always just felt that it's never really quite worked the way they intended. They tried to bring it back in Valhalla, but again, it was just really half-baked in that game as well, and I just never really bothered using it. That said, I do hope there are some social stealth features, like sitting on benches. That's the kind of thing where I feel like it works, but blending in with NPCs, honestly, it just feels clunky most of the time. And I think toning down social stealth might actually be an opportunity to bring back some other stealth mechanics that fit the time period and characters. For example, I'd like to see a disguise system similar to the one that was in Liberation. It was a common shinobi tactic to disguise themselves as civilians and servants to gain access to targets or to spy on their enemies. So this would fit quite nicely with Naoi's skill set. We see a really good example of an assassin disguised as a servant in the TV series Shogun, which you should definitely check out if you haven't already. Other classic ninja tools from games like Tenchu could include caltrops to slow down enemies that are chasing you, shuko claws that could allow you to climb faster, climb previously inaccessible areas, or even perform evasive maneuvers similar to what you could do with the hook blade in Revelations. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? The standard Ottoman hook blade has two parts, you see. The hook and the blade. So you can use one or the other. I'd also like to see the return of some crafting as well, like bombs and traps from Revelations. Obviously, you could refine and improve those systems. And this could work for Naoi and Yasuke as well. Naoi could focus on things like smoke and poison, and then Yasuke could focus on explosives and incendiary items. As I mentioned earlier, I hope some of the skills return from Valhalla, such as pretending to be dead, 
before using a surprise attack. That was pretty cool. They also had something similar to that in Ghost Recon as well, where you could hide in the snow and mud. And considering how detailed the environment and weather systems are in this game, I definitely think there's space there for something like that. It was really surprising to me in Assassin's Creed Unity when you were not able to whistle to attract enemies or move bodies and I, I'm almost certain those features are going to be returning in this game. However, I do think it would be quite interesting if they played on the strengths and weaknesses of Yasuke and Naoe respectively. So for example, because Naoe is quite small and a lot of the samurai enemies are quite large and wearing armour, it makes sense from a practicality standpoint for it to be more difficult for her to move bodies and that would slightly increase the tension in stealth gameplay. In the Xbox version of Tenchu Wrath of Heaven which was titled Return from Darkness and had some additional features, moving bodies was done by dragging them along the ground. Something like this would be great for Naoe so that there's a risk that you might get caught when trying to move bodies a little bit slower. Yasuke on the other hand can easily pick up and move bodies if he needs to as shown with his ability to lift items in the environment and that would slightly balance them out in a way. It's confirmed that we're going to get a home base and I'm excited to see more of that because I loved Monteregioni in Assassin's Creed 2 and the homestead in AC3. Some form of the recruitment and ally system appears to be returning with now I being able to call on the aid of shinobi allies which is awesome to see. I hope this can also be used for stealth takedowns and that Yasuke can call in friendly samurai to help him in combat as well. I think this system is going to be closer to the ally and ship crew systems of Odyssey and Valhalla rather than the Brotherhood version but I'm still happy to see it coming back in some way. Speaking of Brotherhood, there's some really cool features in that game specifically around your horse that never got brought forward into any other game. You could jump straight from your horse, flip around a pole and then you could drop from a height directly onto your horse as well. It would be great to see these features return in Shadows. While I found the combat really basic in Mirage and honestly a bit of a downgrade from Valhalla, I did like that you could stun multiple enemies at once and then perform consecutive takedowns on them. It felt like a great balance between the RPG combat system and the combat of the older games where you could set up multi takedowns. I'd like to see that enemy stunning feature brought forward into Shadows and we know from information provided by Jawraptor that each weapon will have individual skills and special stealth skills as well. One that we see for the Katana, she has a symbol very similar to the multi kill skill from Odyssey so I'm wondering if this functions very similar to the multi kill from Ghost of Tsushima. It's also being confirmed that we can actually play without weapons and perform non-lethal takedowns, which I love having the option to do. I hope as well as takedowns that extends to unarmed combat as well. So far we've just seen samurai enemy types, but I'm curious to see if we'll have enemy shinobi. This could function very similar to the enemy assassins in Rogue that could use your own tactics against you. Now we know that Eagle Vision is returning as the primary way to scan your environment, and we no longer have a bird companion. I have mixed feelings on this and I'll explain why. Especially because it's only Naoe that can apparently use Eagle Vision and Yasuke doesn't have access to it. I think a better way to do this would have been given Naoe the classic Eagle Vision and given Yasuke the bird companion. This would have helped to further differentiate them and show how they represent different aspects of the franchise. Naoe being the classic stealthy assassin and Yasuke being closer to the RPG games. Now again to reference Shogun, we see Lord Torunage engaging in the sport of Takagari, which is Japanese falconry. Yasuke having a pet falcon would have shown his status as a samurai and that would have allowed him to scan the environment to plan his attacks. Even though he's not a stealthy character, you could still use the bird companion to see how many enemies you're going up against, for example. And then Naoe can use Eagle Vision at close range when sneaking through an area. That's just my opinion. I doubt they'd have time to implement that now before the game launches, but it would have been a nice touch. On the subject of features for Yasuke, we know that he's going to be the combat focused character with limited stealth, but he can use ranged weapons like the Tanegashima. I probably mispronounced that, I apologize. But essentially, it's a matchlock gun, like a musket rifle. And he can also use a Yumi, the Japanese longbow. Now I was looking back at some of the older gadgets in the Tenchu games and one of them is fireworks that you can set off 
which causes the guards to look up and not notice you sneaking towards them. Now, a cool application for something like this in shadows could be that loud bangs mask the sound of Yasuke's gunshots, so that if you, for example, were to climb up to a tower and wanted to pick off targets without alerting anyone, you could set off the fireworks, and then every time one goes off, it would cover the sound of your gunshot, because the fireworks drown it out. We had noisemaker gadgets in Unity and Mirage, so this would kind of be like an evolution of that and something similar to what we see in the Sniper Elite games, which is pretty cool. One thing that I might have changed in terms of combat design is making the strengths and weaknesses of Naoe and Yasuke more defined. So, for example, it's being confirmed that Yasuke can use stealth to some extent, and he can also kill enemies silently from ranged with his bow, and he can also use some basic parkour, such as walking along rooftops. But he's nowhere near as proficient at these aspects as Naoe. Which is good because that highlights his strengths, right? But then on the other hand, Naoe still seems like she's a very capable fighter, despite being billed as the stealth and parkour character. Now, I'm not saying she shouldn't be able to fight at all, but if I can take on the same amount of enemies in a fight as Yasuke, or even the same sort of difficulty of enemies, then what incentive do I really have to play as him? I'll just play as the character that can do both. Now, the way I would have done this is we've seen Naoe go against these really large heavy enemy types with a lot of armor and we've also seen that it's possible to fail assassinations against these stronger enemy types as well. I think this is backwards, let me explain. So I think assassination is the only way that Naoe should be able to defeat these large brute enemies. In combat she could hold them off or slow them down or outmaneuver them to escape but she has virtually no way to kill them in a straight up fight without using the environment such as explosive barrels for example. This would really highlight that while she can fight standard weaker enemies proficiently, she's outmatched in a 1v1 against stronger opponents and has to resort to her main skill, which is stealth. On the other hand, make it so that Yasuke, as it's been explained, he can use stealth against weaker enemies but the stronger ones he wouldn't be able to assassinate because he's simply not trained enough in stealth to be able to sneak up on these elite enemy types. So in that scenario, he has no choice but to face them head on and plan his approach accordingly. So maybe he'd want to take out some of the weaker enemies with his lesser stealth skills first so that he can focus on the brutes without being outnumbered. And again, this would really serve to highlight their strengths and differentiate them further. We know that some of the newer Assassin's Creed games have a lot of custom difficulty options, so hopefully they could have something like this in the game. If I remember correctly, it's already been stated that Transmog is confirmed to be in the game from launch, which is great because I hate having to wait for it in an update. I really liked how in Odyssey, you could get variants of each armor and weapon with different metals and materials. I'd like to see that return in some form with the customization, as well as outfit dye as well, so you can change the color schemes. That's something they had in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood and Revelations, and they also kind of brought it back in Mirage as well, so be great to see that in Shadows. With this being the first title that's purely developed for current gen hardware, I'm hoping to see more frequent motion capture in cutscenes, as well as more action set pieces as well. And I'd really like to see the return of something like tombs from Assassin's Creed 2. We know that there's going to be temples around the map, and that would be a great opportunity to have something like tombs make a return. I really enjoyed the various types of mercenaries and mini-bosses that hunted you around the map in the RPG games, so I'm hoping to see a similar system here, maybe something like Ronin or Shinobi that are sent to duel or assassinate you. I'd also like to see the return of hair and beard customization, Hogwarts Legacy was praised for having some of the best black hairstyle representation in games, which is something that developers sometimes struggle to get right, so it would be nice to get some options for Yasuke. We've seen Naoe has like a short hairstyle in all the footage and trailers we've seen, but it'd be nice to get some variation for hair as well. I'm hoping that we can turn off this white outline around Naoe when she's hiding in bushes, just for some extra immersion. I get why it's there, and it's fine to include it as an accessibility feature, but personally I would like to remove it. I also really like this watercolor effect when you assassinate a target, but again, I'd like the option to turn it off if I feel like it. it. Looks really cool, but sometimes I just want realistic immersion. 
On the flip side though, it would actually also be nice to have it so that you can turn it on permanently, or maybe have it as a filter in photo mode. Considering many of the missions can be played in a totally different way, either from Nawe or Yasuke's perspective, I'm hoping that we have a mission replay feature from the get-go. I'd like to be able to finish a mission as Nawe and make that my sort of canon choice for my playthrough, as far as progression is concerned, but then immediately be able to go into the menu and start that mission again from Yasuke's perspective. I don't want to have to wait for New Game Plus to see what the alternative option would have been like. So essentially a memory sequence feature like we had in the older games. Apparently they're removing the panoramic view when syncing to a viewpoint, and honestly, this just feels like change for the sake of change. I really don't like that it's being removed, it's an iconic feature of the franchise, and with this game's visuals looking so great and being very picturesque, it seems like an odd choice to remove it. I hope they reconsider this before launch. I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to talk about, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. it really helps me out, and I'm planning on getting videos out more frequently from now on. Fingers crossed. I know I'm not the best with it, but I do have the Marvel Defenders video still planned. I had to make some changes to it because certain things happened with other games like Suicide Squad and Helldivers 2, um, which you'll, I'll explain why that's relevant in the video, but some of the things that happened around those games kind of changed my opinion on certain things about multiplayer and live service and so on, so yeah, I had to make some big changes to that, which is why it's taken so long. Hopefully when it's out, you'll enjoy it. I um, hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.